Hi everybody, Dr. Anjana Bana here and welcome back to Spill the Tea with Dr. B. And uh, today we are at June's Coffee Bar Gallery. I love this place. Um, I like bringing my kids here. Uh, even my husband likes it even though it looks kind of frou-frou and artsy-fartsy. It's such a nice relaxed place to have a coffee. Um, the people here are very relaxed and if you want you can see there's okay there's books here but there's amazing art all over the coffee shop uh, you can sit here grab some paper they have all the art supplies you need and paint just sit here and paint the whole day um, so I love this place so it's, it's very very relaxing and you can hear the of a coffee machine in the background ASMR <laughs> but uh, today I'm gonna spill the tea about uh, some of our favorite subjects one of them being botulinum toxin A uh, so I had the privilege over the last uh, say month so I mean now we're in August but it was during June early July to attend events um, hosted by all three of these toxins so the first one was on botulinum toxin an A, <laughs> um, like a round table on appropriate uh, dosing as well as preparation and then we went to a book launch so you, you know I, I've, I've got my ultrasound I went on an ultrasound course and I met the amazing Dr. Kathleen Malherb there and she launched a book on ultrasound in association with the company that distributes uh, this toxin Abobotulinum toxin A it's also a toxin that I started with 14 years ago this is what I started learning with and I still use it to this day um, I probably use this the most in my practice and very exciting in our country in South Africa so this has been around I think since 2010 um, this is okay here it's called Bocatur but this is in Europe uh, here in this country it's called uh, Zeoman or Incobotulinum toxin A so this was launched in July and you know uh, we call it like the granola toxin or or um, the organic toxin and you know now only I was watching a skit with someone named Danny Sparkle and it made me realize they associated themselves with uh, one of the ambassadors was Gwyneth Paltrow of Goop fame and the the reason is uh, you know they always tout this toxin as a organic and uh, pure uh, toxin so um, it goes with that sort of you know as, um, as they call them granola natural eating uh, kombucha drinking crowd <laughs> okay so we're just gonna go through like you can't you know they're not interchangeable so you cannot interchange these in terms of units but all of them can be used on a similar patient they you know I'm gonna be talking about the aesthetic use but they've also been used uh, in medical uses cerebral palsy um, it's you know still off-label for proxism uh, hyperhidrosis this one isn't cleared for hyperhidrosis but uh, people that do use this particular toxin probably do use it for hyperhidrosis so at the round table one of the important things they brought up was dosing appropriate dosing so there's been a worldwide sort of discussion on how toxins aren't working anymore uh, they're not working as well they the duration of action is shorter and one of the doctors said you know maybe you know you can't always blame COVID or the COVID vaccine for this she says she thinks this has been happening all along our patient population um, have been aging and if they don't do anything else in terms of uh, skin quality the effectiveness and the um, the look of the toxin changes over those many years so the way the toxin looks uh, when it's done changes so that could be a possibility but what they were saying in this round table is uh, it's not this it's you which is us <laughs> And also the patient it could be patient factors uh, but they were talking about proper preparation so I know there's a lot of practitioners that watch uh, the YouTube as well as patients so when you're using this botulinum uh, toxin a the Allegan one um, you know slow uh, you know like disinfection of course of the of the, the rubber stopper and a slow trickle of uh, the saline and uh, not bacteriostatic into the uh, vial and not like shooting out where there's loads of bubbles and then um, 
swirling it like this. So they said that the whole thing is storage, uh, improper preparation and improper dosing. So everyone is on a little bit of a budget, but you know, the FDA approved dosing would be 64 units. So that's 20 units up there. We often don't use 20 units up in the forehead. So, um, you know, you can adjust that, but I think a lot of people have been skimping on their dosing. So the lower the dose, uh, the lower the effect and the shorter the effect as well. So it remains to be seen, is it us, is it Latoxin? There's always a discussion at the launch of this. We're also chatting about uh, this and this one here and how there seems to have been like a decline in, uh, in the longevity of toxins in general. And there isn't an answer for, for that yet. This one here, the highest picograms of toxin per volume, still so four times more than um, this. And I know people say it diffuses more, it's not very accurate, but it, actually if you know how to use this toxin, it's an amazing toxin. It's also very long lasting with a fast uh, onset of uh, action. But the, the, the thing is, it depends on the doctor. There's a lot of people that, you know, can interchange these two, use them on different patients, use them on the same patient. But um, due to like calculating and maths and all of that, they prefer sticking with one toxin. And the important thing is that they are both FDA approved, they're safe, and if you know how to use them, you know how to use them. And then coming to this. So there's a big thing about, I'm uh, talking about toxins not working, resistance. Um, so what this was touting was that this is uh, treating patients ethically because it doesn't have a complexing protein. This is a 900 kilo Dalton molecule, both of them are. And then there's a little protein that protects it. And just as you inject it into the skin, the protein goes off. And then there's a 150 kilo Dalton uh, toxin that's left behind that affects the acetylcholine. So this only has the 150 kilo Dalton uh, protein. And uh, so they're saying that, you know, it doesn't have all these accessory proteins and due to that um, yeah, there's no resistance but someone brought it up and it's an actually like a really interesting point uh, one of the points was that the resistance is to the actual to toxin so the 150 kilo Dalton uh, toxin and not those complexing proteins they have nothing to do with anything they're just drunk proteins and within seconds they're already discarded once injected so um, that isn't isn't necessarily true um, they were also talking about how precise this is in terms of diffusion so it doesn't diffuse as much so if you want to do precise work uh, this is your bet but it also changes the way you inject so you have to inject more points um, at least a centimeter apart versus this this would be like maybe five points for your frown uh, while this could be seven to nine points but also both 50 well this comes in a, um, a hundred unit and 50 unit uh, vial the other cool thing with this is um, but they haven't tested these two but it's been used in a study uh, with UVB induced hyperpigmentation and they found an improvement in the hyperpigmentation when injected intradermally uh, with this particular new toxin well new in South Africa toxin um, but nothing's conclusive they have to confirm and compare it with this but the important thing to remember this is all botulinum toxin A all 150 uh, kilo Dalton so if you have a doctor using either one of these for like their personal choice or if it's best for you they'll all work and I just mentioned intradermal injections for hyperpigmentation so uh, off-label use of botulinum toxins are intradermal injections so they use it for um, scars they use it for rosacea uh, pore reduction uh, there's no um, you know they call it microtox so and microtox is actually now it's a trademark word so I hope it's okay that I'm using the word microtox it's trade by uh, trademark by a nurse in the States but uh, it's 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 a long it's been used for a long time to improve skin quality uh, reduce redness 
and oiliness. Dr. Sonia Settler, she is a dermatologist from Germany. She came over and she launched this um, in July. And one of the things she brought up was, um, you know, the resistance, the resistance to toxins and a possible reason why. Because, you know, we, we're thinking so many things and I suppose we're blaming the COVID vaccine for, for everything. But one of the reasons she said was we, uh, due to our increased use of the product intradermally, you know, for things now like hyperpigmentation, rosacea, pore size, scarring, all of that, and also around the eyes and in the forehead, the, the, the injections are very, very superficial. And in the dermis, they, it's loaded with immune cells, mast cells, all of those Langerhans cells, and um, they produce um, antibodies to, to the toxin where if we inject directly into the muscle, which is should be the target tissue for this for this um toxin uh, we'd have less of a problem it's got less immune cells but we also have to remember you know the 3d diffusion of the the botulinum toxin so even if you inject it into the muscle there's a 3d diffusion up and down above that and the same with the skin so if anyone has any idea or any um, sort of suggestions as to why a botulinum toxin may not be lasting it would be great if you drop it in the comments down below and you can also tell me do you feel like you've had the treatment done and it doesn't last as long it's not as tight uh, so far i haven't really seen much of that so you know and there hasn't been a proper study on it so you know is it anecdotal is it real is it in our heads um, so i'd love to hear all of that drop it in the comments down below like share and subscribe bye